mid morning here at Bull Moose Camp, Upper Goose Lake on the lower portion of it. Duck swimming off there. This is the dock where the planes arrive with you. There's a cart where you put your, your gear on and head on up to your cabins. A little, little turn here. A couple guys going out fishing there. Here's the, where the minnow buckets are kept. It's numbered by cabin. There are eight cabins. Those are pretty much in order of how they've um, been built. We uh, Everybody pretty much has 14 foot boats. The 16 footers for three people. Um, all have Johnson 15 horsepower outboards that are fueled each day and uh, fish finders to help you find the depth and keep out of the shallow water and getting stuck. And then the ramps help you roll the bus boats up when, um, you know, to keep the. Sometimes it gets a lot of windy out here, windy days, windy nights, and it keeps the boats uh, safer. Those are the guys from Chicago, brothers, they've been fishing here for years and years. As you go up the ramp, uh, you can see the Bull Moose Camp sign and posts there. A lot of anglers like to hold their stringers of fish up and get their photo taken. The uh, A-frame here was built in 71, 72, 73, somewhere in that range. Uh, the original buildings, uh, one of the two original buildings, the other was the slope roof building there, which is... Um, used to be the ice house, but that's where Tom and Shara, the current owners, live. Uh, Tom's family has owned this uh, facility since 1980. Um, we'll take a little look in one of the older cabins here. Stroll around the corner. <coughs> you can see off in the distance, the sidewalk does end here. Uh, obviously, Tom builds this. Um, and there are supports there for future cabins. Uh, Tom and Shara grow this as they see fit. So you'll see several of those around the, the facility as we take our little tour. There's some boats in the background there for when we uh, have more guests in. And they can rotate the boats around if they have any issues with them. This is cabin 5. It's situated right here on the water. It's a little older, more rustic, but still very nice. Uh, these folks obviously wanted some beer and some water and some cokes delivered, so Tom has that here waiting for them when they get here. Is there a nice view? Every cabin has the grill. You see in the distance over there four grills. Uh, the A-frame has three basically rooms slash cabins in it, and they all have their grills out front there. As we walk in, to cabin five, you see the wood-burning stove there. Corner here. There's a map of the lake, of the, all the, basically the Barrens River system, uh, so you can kind of hopefully not get lost when you're out in the boat in the day. And here is the uh, basically when you come into camp, they've got the cabins ready for you. And this is what the state they would be in. This is one of the older ones, obviously. You can see where folks have left their hats, t shirts, tape, and whatnot um, to. Uh, memorialize themselves. The older ones tend to have the bathroom and shower together. Um, ours is the newest one, number eight, and it has separate bathroom shower facilities. These are your typical bunk beds. Very comfortable. Very nice. As you can probably hear, it's extremely quiet here. So, everybody has, you know, stove, oven, refrigerator, coffee pots, all utensils. Uh, you have to plow your food in. Uh, they do sort the trash. Kind of a nice story behind this pike. Um, one of the guys you just saw leaving from Chicago caught this several years ago, and um, I believe the lure had gotten lodged too far into the fish and it wasn't going to survive uh, after trying to revive it multiple times. So he brought it back and he didn't want to mount it because he already had a larger one than this mounted at his house, and uh, Tom decided to mount it and put it here in uh, cabin five. There's the uh, some stuff from 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. Some hats from some past guests. There are guests. It's not uncommon to uh, find guests that have been here 10, 20, 30 years. So we'll continue to kind of walk around. Across the distance of the lake over there, you can see there's a private camp. Uh, they come over for, to get gas and whatnot from Tom. more cars.
parts. Um, you can see kind of the substructure of these a little older. Uh, this is a newer one, that's cabin seven. That's actually fully completed. Um, some guys from Iowa there are having a nice reunion. There's some more pillars. This is our cabin, uh, cabin number eight. Uh, it's almost complete. Everything is basically ready in the inside. It just doesn't have the siding on it yet. Uh, there's the outhouse there, which is very nice. Um, so, we'll go down to the fish house here. As you can see, there's some construction stuff going on. Um, Tom has to build a kind of a sewer slash septic system here per the government of Canada. So uh, he's a mechanical engineer by trade, so it's not a problem. It's just lots of things for him to do. Uh, there's his shed in the back of their house. Uh, like that Polaris, they have to they basically take that thing apart and ship it over in several float planes and then put it back together here because weight is an issue and of course space is an issue too. Ah, there's a little gopher or groundhog eating some dandelions there. On cue, very nice. Here are your uh, extra Johnson motors. Obviously the motors are a very important part of the fishing here. As the lakes are huge, you got to get somewhere. Tough to paddle as some of our friends here have hopefully found out. This is the fish house. Very nice. Very clean. Come in, rinse your fish off. And then you get a cutting board and clean the fish. Fish remains go down the holes there. Got ice there. Bragging board on who caught what. Um, and then once you clean your fish, uh, we've been eating a lot here, as most guests do, but you can also take some home. You see, that's our group here. We have a, a full cooler because we're here for a long time. This is some walleye. You have to leave the skin on so that the state, or the, excuse me, the country knows what type of fish it is when you leave. So we've got walleye, walleye, and some northern pike down there. I believe you can take 28 of each home with a group of seven, so it's four per person. You can actually leave, and it has to be a certain size limit, which is very important. Uh, your minnows are in here. Basically, you put your bucket here, you count them as they go down, make a mark, and you're good to go. Do have some uh, washer and dryer facilities there. And we'll uh, head on up to uh, take a look inside one of the newer, newer cabins. At the tower there. Uh, kind of gets your contact with the outside world. They do have Wi-Fi here, which is nice because you know you really need to come for a full week. Uh, coming for a few days is tough because it's kind of not easy to get here. But once you're here, it's glorious. And being able to handle issues with your office or whatnot are, is a nice bonus uh, when you're uh, when you're here fishing. So again, this is our cabin. It's got everything but siding, of course, but it's still. Um, it's very nice inside. Um, we'll kind of walk up the, to the front deck. We've got some fishing rods hanging out. We're getting ready to actually leave tomorrow. So uh, here's our grills. This is a nice fish cooker. We're gonna, I think Phil's going to leave it here to donate it to uh, camp. Everybody checking their emails before they hit the river and the, and the lake. sink, separate shower and bathroom facility, which is nice for a group of our size. Large kitchen area. Your pike above the door is, seems to be the case in most cabins here. And, uh, some more boats. And um, Bull Moose Camp. Gotta love it. Upper Goose Lake. No poisonous snakes. No poisonous bugs, no poisonous spiders, no poison ivy, no poison oak, no poisonous snakes, even the gophers are friendly. Um, really nice place to relax and catch lots of fish. It's a great fishing area here.